he actually will notice that it does the OCD mode on that, so it does pull out. If I install this app here, it's just kind of in the middle. Uh, there's a big hole here, um, and then once the animation's done, we'll just automatically it. Um, but if you're moving things manually, then you have to do the, uh, the mode that Hugo showed, which is uh, if I move this, say move this over here, and now it's you know it's not really that nice thing. Uh, so this one is in, uh, this is kind of like the home screen organizing mode. Um, so when you shake it here, then it'll do that same. Um, another one is the bulk move, uh, so we can take a bunch of stuff. And then put them together. You can, you can either drop them individually or you can pile them up, right? Pinch them together and then drop them all in. Yep. Uh, should we... Yeah, should I show? Uh, yeah, should we do effects? Uh, so yeah, I, I actually, I didn't know this feature existed until maybe a month ago. Um, but you can change the home screen transition effect. Uh, so the default one is slide, um, and there's quite a few options here. Um, over slide just does the kind of this sort of bounce. Uh, crossfade is okay. Um, I am a fan of rotate as well. It's actually my yeah, me too. Um, task manager. Task manager sounds good. Uh, so this is the new task manager. I think we showed the animation, um, and it actually really does. Like over the, this is one of the most common actions you'll do, um, and so this animation really makes a difference uh, in terms of what you feel. Um, and so we have the same, the similar stuff that we had in UI5, where you can lock apps here. So you pull down, uh, and this is how you prevent apps from getting cleared in the background. And so you go ahead and save these. Uh, if you want to see the preview, you swipe. Kind of like pinch, pinch to zoom, uh, and then it, it becomes the big previews. And now, if I go back uh, and I open this recent again, it'll be permanently expanded. So it's, it basically stays this way until you change it. Um, and you can do the same stuff, right? It's the same mode from here. You, know, you can get rid of stuff, uh, and then you can clear everything, but just help you right now. I find myself trying to pinch on reasons on my iPhone all the time. <laughs> um, we, oh, no, we should do notifications. Yeah. Uh, so notifications are a little hard to demo because we have to chunk. I have a question regarding the notifications. For example, uh, when uh, Hugo initially showed the demo uh, in the what's when Hugo initially showed the demo in the WhatsApp application, there was a marker about the hundred messages, like three hundred messages. I have how many applications? How many different applications support this type of notification functionality? Are you talking about the, the badges that's on the icon? Yes, the, on the on the icon. That uh, so that, that's actually every app supports that. Uh, so it's basically anytime you have an unclear notification, it'll show a badge. Okay. Uh, so let me see. For example, if I get mail, uh, even that mail icon would show how many hundred emails I have. Yes. Uh, so you have this height. This height. This thing. one. Uh, and so this is actually a notification from here, right? That it's this. Uh, it's basically acting the active height. Uh, and if you double click on the app, uh, you get this kind of that app preview notification. Uh, so then if I clear this, the badge will be done. Uh, so it's 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 the badges are linked to the notification stage. And um, and how is it related to the important and unimportant notifications? How are the badges related? Uh, so the badges are not related directly to the important and unimportant. It's it's for any notification. You can't toggle the badges. Uh, I think they might be. So that is important, no? Like, I mean, I, so that's what, what I was going to show anyway. Was the, uh, so the notification um, settings here. Uh, so let's, let's go with Pike, I guess. So here is the individual app notifications. 
Uh, so you basically have two options, right? And it'll it'll show you on the preview kind of where the notifications are coming. Uh, so this bottom option is what dictates whether or not it shows up on the lock screen and whether or not it shows up in that kind of uh, floating notification. Um, yeah, in, in uh, Android 5, uh, I think Google calls these heads up notifications. Yeah. We call them floating notifications. Google calls them heads up notifications. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know uh, what Apple calls them. Um, so our floating notifications are tapped. So, um, and so you, so you have two options here. And by default, other than the apps that we've selected, which are the majority of which are messaging apps, um, most things are just show notifications here. Um, because when you get the floating notification, if you just swipe it away, does it also go away from the notification sheet? Uh, it is highly, it's really irritating on Lollipop. It just shows up, and if, if you're working on something, you just swipe it away, it also goes from the notification No, no, no. We consider them kind of separate notifications. At least, so this has actually changed a couple of, people had mentioned that some of these features were launched and then people didn't like them and they changed, changed a number of times. Um, right now, if you swipe it, Actually, for the last few months, I believe, you swipe it, it's a separate thing. This is like a, we need your attention right now, and the notification shade is like, here's the other stuff you should do. That's it, right? So how it should be. Yeah. So I'll tell you exactly what happens and, and why you're upset with the way it's done in Lollipop. You're showing, like, you're, you're showing a demo to someone, you get this, like, super inappropriate message, you just want to like get rid of it as quickly as possible, <laughs> but you don't want to forget to reply to it later or give that person a hard time for sending an inappropriate uh, message to start. But then, if you if you dismiss it and it goes away from notifications, then you're gonna to forget to reply to that person, right? See? On pressing the volume button, when we get that circular thing for being. Uh, and on pressing them, they, they don't get any uh, extended volume settings like we used to get. Like, if you could slide. Yeah, the, that's a pet peeve of mine. Like, if you if you want to change the media the media volume, uh, yeah, so before, you, if you press volume and you're controlling the ringer volume, if you tap on that circle, you could go to all three. Digital. Yeah, like, why did that disappear? Uh, I mean, so the way I, like, kind of what you were describing. That's about, what you are talking about, right? Kind of what you were describing on EOS 6 is that when it first launched, there were, there were many more features similar to that which weren't present in the UI 6 that were kind of like EUI 5 power user features. Um, and we slowly added those um, as the months have gone by. I think that's a pretty popular feature. Um, I would expect something, either a setting or some uh, change in the I, I actually think that there's probably a better way to do it than how it was on a new Wi-Fi. I don't know exactly how that is, but I remember finding it quite annoying uh, in Wi Five and I, I, I remember um, I remember for example trying to like dismiss that thing when it appeared. Um, for example when I was trying to uh, give a screenshot and I somehow didn't quite press it right and then the volume thing appeared and then I wanted to get rid of it and then I touched it and then I got three volume rockers instead and it was just a pain in the ass. So my personal view is like we should we should do one better than just bring back the new like that. But I agree with you that that use case is not being addressed right now and it's important. It, it, I like that picture a lot too. Uh, I want to show, uh, I, I'm actually very interested in hearing thoughts from this audience on the crazy thing that we did about notifications. Uh, tell you why, I was a little bit skeptical at first. Uh, this thing about important and unimportant notifications until I started using it. Because I was like, wow. So like all of a sudden, all my notifications are gone. As in, they're not even showing a status bar icon. They're just tucked in. And I was like, that, that's weird. Like you're taking control away from me. And then I started using it. For some time, if you go to the uh, settings, show status icon option. For some time, I've gone back in here to notification settings, and I've turned on show notification icon. Uh, so that I would get all the icons up there. And then, uh, of course, we're always kind of going to new phones. I got a new phone that had freshly built on it. 
and it's off by default. And I didn't really think about it until I realized, huh, you know, it seems like my heart has been at more peace lately. I wonder why. And then it was because I don't have all these notifications in front of me all the time. I don't have to even, I, I, find, I found myself even like going to the shade a lot less often, right? It's kind of like my life became more peaceful. The notifications are kind of like a task list that never clears. It's just like really, and when you think when you think about it that way, it's true, right? It's an unread inbox that if you care about getting rid of unread mails, which I do, you just will never clear them. Uh, and I felt the same. I felt the same way when it when I first used that feature. I thought it was a bug, uh, and now I I can't turn it on. It just it's too annoying. It's a crazy idea. I think there's a. I think there is a balance. I think it takes some time to get used to. Here's a crazy idea. You know how in Android Five uh, they have heads up notifications and it's like priority zero, right? It's the highest priority notification, and the app can define it. I would argue we should curate over. Check your email. Really? Do you agree with what I said, or did you 180 percent disagree? No, I totally, I agree with it, but I think I'm I think I'm more aggressive actually. I wonder if if you think about it this way, that there way. is think about it this way. If you had, let's say in New York, right, there was a huge snowstorm, and if you had news apps from every one of those like popular news apps, you'd get a notification from every one of them, right? Because they would all tell you there's some major snowstorm. Watch out. P zero heads up. P zero, and they should be because if you only had one of them, you should get it. But like each app doesn't know that you have four other. I mean, it could be on Android. It could know, but like CNN isn't going to design itself to know that there's other news apps that might send you a notification. Right? So cool. The system should know, right? And the system knows, hey, you got four notifications. We could we could do NLP. We could figure out like, all right, there should only be one here. This is the news app he actually uses. Yeah, it's, it is a very system function, and it's a, it's a service. I wonder if. I was going to talk about CTS, but we can leave that for the conversation. Uh, even, well, I, it's, I'll, we'll talk to you about it. Because right. it's, a, it's a, it is a deep conversation. Do we curate over Lollipop P0 notifications or not? Uh, 